Hi, this is Quat, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about ventilation and the diffusion in the respiratory system. So ventilation is the movement of the air in your respiratory system, and the diffusion is the movement of air from medium to another medium. So let me start with the ventilation. Uh, let's talk about the things that uh, air have to go through. First, the nasopharynx, that's your nose area. Nasopharynx has turbinates. Turbinates have a lot of blood vessels. And uh, as air goes into your nose and goes through the system, what happens is that blood warms up a little bit because you are warm. And also nasal space has a lot of moisture and your air is going to get a little bit more moist. And then the air is going to get to the pharynx. And the pharynx, nothing much happens, but people with sleep apnea usually have a problem in their pharynx. And then air is going to get to the larynx and then trachea. And at trachea, air is going to go to the right lung, left lung, and start to get to the bottom of your lung. And here, this first one is called the branch zero. And total, your lung has branch 23. And there's a little intermediate pit stop branch 16. In your bronchus or bronchiolus, all these are bronchiolus space. The branch 0 to branch 16 is the dead space, about 150 milliliter of volume. And this space, you have air moving up and down, but it's called a dead because there's no alveoli to do the gas exchange. But once you go past branch 16, all of this area, anywhere along the line, of course, more at the bottom, you have a lot of alveoli. In fact, you have 300 million alveoli. Uh, totaling of uh, area 100 meters squared. So in the ventilation process, air will go from outside all the way down to any of these alveoli found in branch 16 bronchiolus down to branch 23 bronchiolus. Now let's talk about diffusion. Diffusion is important in alveoli. So here is alveoli. And if you zoom in, these are cells, one cell, two cell, three cells, here's another cell. Each of this cell is a squamous epithelial cell. By the way, as you move down this air pathway, early on you have a lot of columnar epithelial cells with cilia. Here's more columnar epithelial cells with cilia. Cilia will move and kick these pathogen or dust out the entry. And as you go down, columnar cells turn into cuboidal cells and the cuboidal cells will eventually become squamous cells. And these are the squamous cells. By the way, also the early pathways are uh, bigger. So early passages are just thicker and bigger, but then the uh, size of the passage gets small. And also the size of the supporting structure gets small. Early on, you have big structures. So you have some bones, cartilages that maintain these structures, but down the line, you don't have any cartilages. So you can find cartilages in the uh, trachea, uh, bronchus, but not in bronchiolus. Okay, now back to diffusion. So this is a alveoli and there's a lot of gas. And you have a little bit of liquid around it. And then the alveoli touches capillary. Blood goes in from here, blood goes out from there. The size of alveoli is about one red blood cell. This whole thing, I'm drawing a lot here, but it's very thin. And an air, let's call it G for gas molecule, will diffuse through this structure and get to the capillary, the blood flow. Okay, now let's talk about different gas molecules and how they behave in this uh, diffusion process. So let's start with NO2. NO2 can go through this and uh, stay in capillary, but there's nothing in the blood system that can capture NO2 and uh, keep it moving. So NO2 will take up this space and this taking up of this space is called a perfusion, like perfume. You spray perfume and you will get to your entire room. Spreading through in this space is called perfusion. And NO2 is perfusion limited, meaning that the rate at which NO2 can go through the uh, structure to go from the outside world to blood world is limited by how fast NO2 can perfuse through your uh, blood system. 
Again, there's nothing coming in to clear the NO2s here, so NO2 is perfusion limited. You have to design some kind of molecule to keep pumping the NO2 out of the system so the NO2 can keep coming in. Again, NO2 is perfusion limited. The next molecule is carbon monoxide. Uh, unlike NO2, carbon monoxide has a carrier, which is hemoglobin. It turns out the hemoglobin has 270 times more affinity with carbon monoxide than oxygen. So there's always going to be hemoglobin coming in because of red blood cells. And these hemoglobins will be driving the movement of uh, carbon monoxide. So this area is always going to have uh, more capacity to accept new carbon monoxide. So unlike NO2, CO is diffusion limited because faster CO can go through this structure, more CO can get into your system. Again, always there will be thing that's going to be driving the CO through this space. You have opening and the opening welcomes more CO to go through. So CO better diffuse fast to increase its concentration in your system. Finally, let's talk about uh, oxygen. Oxygen can be NO2-like or CO-like. By default, oxygen is perfusion limited. You have hemoglobin and hemoglobin will come in with red blood cell and carry oxygen through this system. And hemoglobin is not working at its best. So there will be some oxygens coming in and staying in this area waiting for new hemoglobin to come capture it and take it out this area. Oxygen is perfusion limited. So if you can somehow increase the rate of oxygen perfusing through this system, which is your entire body, then yes, more oxygen can come in. Now, there are cases where your body will make that of fast perfusion happen. This is when your body is doing a lot of exercise and doing lots of work. What happens is that your capillary will distend and your body will just become good at moving oxygen. And in that case, oxygen will switch from perfusion limited to diffusion limited. And now finally, let's talk about two diseases that can affect this diffusion process. One is called diffuse interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, and the other one is COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In diffuse interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, the alveoli epithelial cells, so here is an alveoli, they get thicker because of fibrosis or whatnot. So what happens? The diffusion slows down. In COPD, some of the alveoli area is going to be damaged and now you have less area for diffusion. Overall, diffusion is a function of many things, but it correlates with area. More area you have, better diffusion and correlates with solubility of the gas. More soluble the gas, faster the diffusion. But it anti-correlates with thickness of the wall. So thicker this thing is, it takes more time to diffuse. So for diffuse interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, the diffusion is going to slow down. And finally, the size of the molecule also matters and the diffusion anticolates with the size of the gas. Bigger the molecule, slower the diffusion. Smaller the molecule, more agile, faster the diffusion. And both of these diseases, one causing the wall to get big, decrease the diffusion, the other driving the area down and uh, lowering the diffusion.